Hello everybody, this is Nate from Team Chaos and in this tutorial we're going to be doing a breakdown of this chair material that you see in front of you right now. Now this tutorial has been somewhat surprisingly highly requested by a lot of you uh, through, you know, uh, by, by expressing your wishes through YouTube comments and we are listening so we really wanted to do this tutorial for you folks. Um, now, as you'll see, there's really not a whole lot of science behind our setup here. It's just kind of a relatively basic setup. We're going to be dealing with a photo scanned asset here, but we will uh, do, we will make some creative decisions as to how we actually set up our material here. It's still going to be sort of based on uh, realism, but we also are directed things a little bit here. But enough of that, enough of the chitter chatter. Uh, let's uh, Let's just dive deep into things, shall we? Okay, so first up, let's take a look at how the environment is set up. And for the environment, as you can see, we are in an interior here. And this interior has been very meticulously modeled. There's so many details that we spent years modeling. And obviously, that's not true. In fact, the interior itself is just an HDRI. Okay, so we're just using this HDRI that you see right here. Uh, we're plugging it into the environment map slot um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. We haven't even we haven't even loaded it in as a Corona bitmap. You don't have to do that if you do not want to. Um, we're using the spherical environment mapping mode. And yeah, that's how we get our lighting in our scene. There's no additional lights here. Um, and it's also, you know, well, the entirety of our scene, save for the chair and the violin. We do have this plane at the bottom here. We thought we were going to use it to kind of bounce some light uh, from the bottom here, but ultimately we could just delete it because it's really not doing anything. Now, as far as the perspective here goes, well, we're using a single camera. It has a uh, lens set to, it has the lens set to 52 millimeters and uh, we just kind of position it so that it kind of makes sense. And, and that's really all that there is to it. Okay, so that's kind of our entire environment, our entire scene, right? Real simple, but also really fast to render. And it kind of looks cool as well. Okay, so that's it for the scene. Uh, let's move on to the material breakdown for our chair material. Okay, so let's first take a look at the texture maps that we're going to be using here. So we have our base color texture map or our diffuse map. Then we have our roughness map. We have our normal map and we have our displacement map. So we have all the basic ingredients that you need to have to create, um, you know, some sort of a cool looking realistic material. Um, or maybe maybe the displacement map isn't really a basic ingredient, but you know, we have, these are the assets that we're going to be using. And uh, typically these are the assets that you need to create some sort of a cool looking material, right? Right, now let's maybe take a closer look at our diffuse map here. Let's open up the preview window, let's make it bigger and as you can see we're dealing with a photo scanned asset and the entire thing has been uvw unwrapped so that means that all we have to do here is or all we had to do here is we just had to plug this thing into the base color slot and look at that um, it maps perfectly to our wooden chair now at this point we did want to be a little bit artistic okay and what we did here was we brought in a corona color correct map okay we plugged it into the base color slot and then we plugged the diffuse map into it. We did this because we wanted to lower the saturation uh, on our diffuse texture here ever so slightly. We just preferred this slightly more desaturated look. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty much all that there is to the base color setup. Next up, we started playing with our roughness map. And roughness maps, as you probably know, are data maps. Okay, which means typically how you want to load them in is with the gamma correction here set to override and the override set to 1.0. So you don't want to mess with the gamma of this map, right? And this typically holds true for uh, all of your data maps. So that means your glossiness maps, your roughness maps, your normal maps, your displacement maps, et cetera, et cetera. That's typically for, I guess, most assets out there broadly speaking, uh, the sort of the correct workflow. If you go with the gamma overrides at 1.0, you plug your map into your asset, you're going to get very close to the look that the original author intended for this asset, even if it was created, uh, you know, in other software. But uh, what we did here was we kind of 
uh, we knew we were going to we, we knew we were going to customize the effectus roughness map had because we didn't really kind of uh, we wanted to emphasize the sort of the dirty look of our wooden chair here. So we went with an automatic gamma um, sort of workflow here. Um, it, technically not really correct for this particular asset, but we knew we were going to customize it anyway. So it wasn't really all that important for us. But as you can see uh, right now, when we switch to the automatic gamma, the entire thing looks just, you know, not, not really as intended, right? But again, we knew we were going to customize things. So we really didn't bother uh, with setting it correctly. We brought in a Corona color correct map. Okay. We plugged the roughness map into it. And then the entire setup we plugged into the base roughness slot. Okay, uh, then we just started playing with the brightness here and we upped it to 0 0.4. No, I think it was 0 0.4, sorry, 0 0.5. Uh, actually, we went with the final value of 0 0.4. Okay, um, that is because we just really wanted to emphasize this sort of dirty look that we're getting here. Okay, so certain parts are, um, as you can see, uh, they are not quite as rough, while other parts are so rough that you can barely make up any uh, reflections to them, right? Because the reflections are so diffuse. Okay. And this is, this is not how this asset was intended to be brought in, but you know, we're being creative here and we kind of prefer this look. So we just went with it. Okay. And, um, in a nutshell, that's our entire, uh, roughness setup. Okay. Next up, uh, we start playing with the normal map. Okay. And normal maps, you know, typically these are data maps. How you want to load them in is with the gamma override set to 1.0, but um, here's the thing, right? For uh, any sort of a normal map in Corona, you're going to need to bring in a Corona normal map map, right? You plug the normal map into it, and now you get this little warning here, right? That the input image is probably loaded with incorrect gamma. So at this point, you want to press this add gamma to input button, okay? And now this is loaded incorrectly. But you know, um, if you load it in this map uh, with the override set to 1.0, right? You're going to be able to see that you won't you won't be getting that warning because the uh, this is a data map and it's being loaded in correctly, right? So now you don't have to press this add gamma to input button right here. All right. So just a bit of a quick tip, I suppose. Um, but in any case, what we did next here was we just took the normal map and we plugged it into the base bump slot material. Then what we did was we just, uh, you know, lowered the strength of this effect ever so slightly. But now ultimately it was still a little bit strong, as you can see right it's just it is stronger than it probably should be but you know we kind of like the look so we just went with it and last but not least uh we uh, we brought in a displacement map we loaded in with the gamma right set to 1.0 and we just plugged it into the displace slot in our material and then we started playing with the max and min levels here or basically just the max level five centimeters is obviously way too much so we went with a value of uh, 0. One ultimately, okay. We just wanted the uh, the surface of this chair material to be slightly more um, uneven than it was, okay. And that's why we used the displacement map there. So that's it for our chair material breakdown, okay. Uh, obviously, we do have this violin here that doesn't have um, a fully developed material applied to it yet, uh, but that's not something we're going to showcase in this tutorial because we already showcased it in our physical material. Uh, series. Okay, so if you want to see how the violin material was made, well, uh, make sure to check out that series out. Now, at this point, maybe it's worth reiterating the fact that, you know, because we're dealing with a photo scanned asset, typically, if you're trying to make the asset look like it was looking in reality, you would typically just take your all of the maps you get and you would just plug them in uh, where they need to go. Uh, you really shouldn't tweak them too much if you want to get close to how the actual uh, asset looked like in reality. But in this case, as we mentioned, we wanted to kind of create a bit more of an interesting looking material. And that's why we played with the reflective properties for it. We kind of bumped the bump amount um, a little bit higher than what it probably should be, et cetera, et cetera. But these are all creative decisions. In this situation, hopefully you'll agree, it created a bit more of an compelling image. Okay, but there's one more thing that we could still talk about here, and that is uh, how we tone map the image. Okay, so as you can see, we're not using the default tone mapping tone mapping stack. We kind of customized it a little bit. So 
let's just go through all of these settings one by one. So first up, we played with the exposure. We wanted to make things just a little bit more blown out. Arguably, we're kind of pushing the limits here, but again, we kind of like the look, so we just went with it, and hopefully you agree that it looks decent. Uh, for the white balance, we really haven't changed anything. Same for the green uh, magenta tint and same for the contrast and same for the saturation. We could, as a matter of fact, we could just go ahead and delete these um, from our stack. But, you know, it's, it's at the same time, it's always useful to have them in there. So, you know, we just stuff them in there. We did bring in a filmic tone map operator where we just ever so slightly upped the rich shadows you know it just introduced just a little bit more of that contrast in the shadows we kind of liked it so we went with it that's the only adjustment we made with this filmic operator and then we are using a LUT which is one of my personal favorites if I may say so um, it's the Chem Amlin Photographic 03 LUT it comes bundled with Corona and if we disable it you know things look drastically different and as for the entire tone mapping, that's, again, <laughs> all that there is to it. All right, and that's a wrap for this tutorial. We hope you've learned something new. And if you have any uh, other suggestions for future tutorials that we should do, please do let us know because we are listening. Now, as we always say, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>